Hey everyone, this is Zach again. Uh, I'm just here with another lecture. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about when you do and don't want to touch your opponent's stones. So most of us know the proverb that says uh, when you touch your opponent's stones it makes their group or whatever stronger. So you generally don't want to do that because obviously you're making your opponent stronger. He can do a lot more with that group and it's not really nice for you. But also, uh, what we have to think about also is that when you're touching your opponent's stones, they're also touching your stones, meaning that you you are also getting stronger by doing that. So um, today I'm just going to be talking about when it's good to do that. You never really want to make your opponent stronger for obvious reasons, but uh, sometimes it's okay if you're making yourself stronger in return. So I'm going to go ahead and give some examples of that. So uh, let's just say that, I don't know, we had some type of weird example like this. Where uh, there was a couple white stones like this. Your stone was being pincered and you want to make uh, a base with this stone, with this uh, stone at M3. So generally what we want to do on the side is make a two-space extension. But, oh yeah, I should, I should first go over uh, that this is also considered touching when you shoulder hit the stone. Because white kind of only has uh, one of two options and both of them touch your stone. So it's kind of considered touching even though it's not really actually touching. Anyways, so uh, black wants to make this two-space extension, but obviously there's a stone at H3, I mean H4. So if he does this, uh, he knows he's going to be making his opponent stronger. So if he did do this, and it went something like this, watch your double Hane because black can't really uh, cut or anything. He'll just uh, have a lot of problems with the group. He needs to go ahead and Nobi out, and white can go ahead and protect or something. So obviously from this, white, I mean, black is probably going to live in this space. He has some eye space. Uh, but white is uh, white is very very strong on the outside. If you consider the exchanges that just took place, black got uh, a few moves in a very small space that he's not really going to be able to do much with. Where white got a lot of influence to the outside, that's very strong. The one cutting point he has doesn't work because the ladder. So um, this would obviously be very good for uh, for white. Um, so we generally don't want to do this for that reason because the exchange of black getting stronger to white getting stronger, white can do more with his influence than black can even though they're both getting stronger so generally what we do in this situation is we do a one space extension which looks really weird and really small because it doesn't look like you're getting very much at all but actually when you really think about it it's quite nice because for one thing White can't surround you in one move. He, it takes really, it would really take like three moves to completely surround you. Uh, so that's one thing nice about it. Also, black has this move. And with this, black is automatically alive pretty much. There's, it would be very hard for white to kill this. So it's, it's obviously impossible to kill it with one, two, even probably three moves. So, uh, if white wanted to go ahead and defend that, now black can go ahead and jump out in a couple different ways. So, um, this is quite nice because you have the option of undercutting at h2 or uh, jumping out still, and you have a little bit of a base and you didn't touch your opponent. So, um, you made shape with your uh, sh uh, uh, you made shape with your group. Uh, you made it stronger um, and gave it a little bit of a base without actually even uh, making your opponent that much stronger. The only thing he really got was this H2 stone. And uh, if you look at the previous example, where uh, let's see if I can get to it white got all his influence, it's going to be a lot harder for black to try to do something on the side later because now white has uh, these stones to attack whatever black puts in there. 
whereas with uh, one of these examples block uh, trying to go in here would probably be a lot easier now because now um, these stones at h2 uh, and h4 don't even really have a base or anything yet so possibly black could even attack them and the o3 stone isn't even completely safe so this is much nicer for black than actually touching the opponent's stone so this would be a case when you won't you wouldn't want to uh, touch your opponent's stone um, So an example where you might want to touch uh, your opponent's stone might be, say, if you were completely surrounded. If he had all these stones uh, in this area, it's obviously now uh, obvious, I guess, that the only way to even attempt to live would be to try to make as much base as possible. And considering your opponent's already really strong, it doesn't really matter if you make him any stronger. So you can try something like this. Go ahead. Maybe he'll block. I'm not sure. I haven't read this problem out. But most likely black lives in here. Obviously white's really strong, but at least you lived. So um, this would be uh, an example where you might actually want to touch your opponent's stones is if uh, you really just really want to live and that's your only objective and you don't care how strong you make your opponent. Sometimes in that case, it's better just to leave your stone and let it die anyways. Just go ahead and make some moves elsewhere, and if he wants to kill it, then okay, I got a couple moves elsewhere. So, um, yeah. Anyways. So, last example. Let's say you had a stone somewhere around here. And, like before, oops. This stone is being surrounded on all sides, pretty much. Uh, like this. Uh, so obviously the shape point for black. Most of his nose here. So in this case, uh, white might actually want to touch a uh, black stone. But of course you should also keep in mind that by doing so you're going to make black stronger. The reason white might want to do that is because he knows he's going to get stronger in return. So if it goes something like this, black escapes, and white gets a very strong shape to the outside. The stones at R9 aren't going to die anytime soon, and black's shape uh, is definitely better than it was before, but uh, it's still having problems. It still doesn't have enough base to get two eyes. It's most likely definitely going to live uh, but black didn't gain much out of the exchange. Uh, white gained a lot of influence to the outside, and black only got gained those three stones at a P12. So uh, white might want to do this if he has stones around the K16, D16 area. Like, uh, let me just go ahead and show you a time that you might want to do that. Is if white had stones maybe around this area. Now you can see why white will want to do this, because those stones that R9 aren't as important. Um, also, let's say the stones that R9 were important, and instead of cutting, uh, white could go ahead and back off, and now black goes here, and uh, now again you have influence to the outside, and uh, you have Sente to go ahead and fix your shape somehow. So. Uh, or this way, probably. Oh, oops. This way, probably. Uh, so yeah. Sometimes uh, you want to touch your uh, opponent's running away group because you know it's going to escape in the first place. But uh, you know by touching it, you can gain strength yourself. So um, sometimes it's good to touch a weak group. But not usually unless you actually have like uh, something to do with those stones. Like you know you can do something with them. Like the stones that are 9 Right now you don't really see what you're doing with them. So you probably wouldn't want to do that. Because then black can go ahead and try something to reduce your influence. So you generally don't want to go ahead and touch a weak group uh, too soon to make yourself stronger. You usually just want to wait and... Uh, see like where your stones are at 
where you want to make influence, what's the important part of the board, and maybe you'll gain stones in a certain area so that you can even kill the group. Generally better to leave the group, a weak group, until uh, you know what you can do uh, to gain the most profit somewhere. So basically, uh, not usually a good idea to touch your opponent's stones unless you're just really trying to live in a certain area or um, you're trying to gain strength somewhere else. Uh, generally not good to touch a weak group because it makes it stronger but it can be good if you want to gain influence something somewhere else. Um, and so that's basically it for this one. Uh, thanks you guys for watching. If you have any questions or anything, just comment or uh, message me or something. And um, I'll see you guys later.